One unique experience that was a part of many baby boomers' lives was the tradition of waiting for the milkman to deliver fresh milk. Wait a minute. Is this the milkman that was coming over while my wife was gone? Because that kid don't look like me. If you guys were around at this time, guy delivering milk to the door, did it? what was the cost like? I see he has a little book there, maybe taking invoices. That's pretty interesting that, you know, little babies there answering the door to get some milk. Families would often leave their empty bottles outside their doors the night before. And in the morning, the milkman would replace them with fresh, cold bottles of milk. The milk was typically delivered in a small truck with a distinctive design and the milkman would often whistle or shout to announce his arrival. Because this is a time that we'll never get back. I can appreciate that they went through this, but I wasn't there to experience it, so I can't say that I could think back, but if I were to put myself back in those days, to fast forward to now, like some of you have been here, I'm assuming, uh, isn't it a crazy thing? You probably haven't thought about getting milk from the milkman in decades, you just go to the, the grocery store and put it in your refrigerator and it lasts a couple of, what, like two weeks or something? S and H green stamps were a ubiquitous part of many baby boomers' childhoods. These trading stamps were first introduced in the 1930s by the Sperry and Hutchinson Company and quickly became a popular way for consumers to save money on purchases. Oh, this is it. They call them trading stamps. I'm assuming these are coupons, vouchers or stuff, right? Trading stamps. Retailers would offer the stamps as a reward for spending money in their stores, and customers could then redeem them for a variety of products. Now, you get a bunch of advertisements for, for, for penis pumping machines and, and all of these pills to make you lose 10,000 pounds of body fat in one day with just one little pill for five easy payments of $10.99 a month. Do you remember clipping baseball cards to your bikes? No, I don't. During the 1950s and 1960s, baseball cards were hugely popular among kids. And one common way to show off your collection was to attach them to your bike spokes with a clothespin. As you rode, the cards would flicker against the spokes, creating a unique and satisfying sound that was instantly recognizable to other kids in the neighborhood. I mean, I get putting, I thought they were putting it on so you could actually see it, but if you're making it to do like the, the bike sound, like we, growing up, we put water bottles like right under the frame so that when it uh, grinds against a bottle, it sounds like a motorbike. Drive-in movie theaters were popular in the 1950s and 60s and provided a fun and social experience for families and couples. Moviegoers would park their cars in front of a giant screen and watch the latest films while snacking on popcorn and other treats. Slow down everything. Technology makes things like happen so fast. You don't have time to appreciate someone getting a message from you and how it used to be where it would take a long time so that when you finally hear from that person, you're excited that you read their letter. I feel like I was born in the wrong time sometimes, man. Maybe it's my old soul coming out, you know what I'm saying? Back home on the TV screen, families enjoyed some iconic TV shows. One television show that was a beloved part of many childhoods was Bonanza. This classic Western series premiered in 1959 and it ran for an impressive 14 seasons. The show was notable for its strong family values, complex characters, and beautiful outdoor scenery. Strong family values. We don't do that in 2023. All we do is push for single moms, bash the dads, and pay the government. Bring people back together, bring the communities back together. There's more safety, there's more togetherness, there's more civilized children, okay? You don't have these stupid little kids running around stealing Kias and calling themselves the Kia boys and causing harm to other people's properties. Come on. Music is the backdrop for every generation. But there was one cultural phenomenon that look, look at these guys dressed so sharply. Like you see them coming across the street, you think, oh, they're going to a business meeting. They're going to work. Looks like they cared about what they look like when they go outside. Or maybe their parents are like, hey, you better dress really nice when you go outside. You're going to be in front of people. And oh, well, we've lost a lot of that. Beatlemania. This term describes the intense fan frenzy 
that surrounded the British band, The Beatles, during the mid-1960s. With their catchy pop songs, mop-top hairstyles, and charming personalities, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr captured the hearts and imaginations of millions of fans around the world. And while you watched all these things from home, you could enjoy a Swanson TV dinner. These prepackaged meals were introduced in 1953, and they were initially marketed as a convenient way for busy families to enjoy a complete meal in front of the television. Do you guys remember this stuff? Like, either your grandparents or maybe you did it. These kind of things. Let me know in the comment section down below if you were here for this or if you remember these things. Let's just bring that nostalgia back for you. Maybe you haven't thought about it in a long time, and I'm reminding you of where you came from, okay? These TV dinners. Now you got Papa John's, just easily go buy your pizza. No, remember this. Instant hits came in the form of technology, too. In the form of the electric calculator. Before the invention of calculators, people relied on manual methods, such as slide rules and abacus, to perform mathematical calculations. Texas Instrument SR50. This is fast forward, I don't know how many years into the future. 50, 60 years into the future, this is what we're using. The more you go back and see where things originally came from, it just makes you appreciate the hard work that the people that worked on these things did. Because you things that we use now is just like, yeah, of course, that's just common sense. Like, no, it wasn't common at a certain point. Someone had to create this. Someone was like, hey, we need to put a screen on a calculator. Everyone was like, wait, what, what are you talking about, man? We got this tape. We just use the tape. I'm like, no, 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 put a screen on it. Make it easy. You know, Alan Turing, without that guy, where would we be? Who knows? Who knows? Do you remember talking to the operator? Before the advent of automated phone systems, people would have to speak to a human operator to make a phone call or to get information. Operators were typically female and were trained to assist with phone-related tasks, such as connecting long-distance calls, providing phone numbers, and making emergency calls. Like, this is so insane, you know? And the more you learn about how signals work, how data travels over the air or through wires, and to understand those kind of things and to see how they were manually, you know, uh, plugging into let's just say a port, if you need, this port needs to be accessed to speak to this person, to have this line of communication. They were literally doing that themselves. Like you can see it here, they're switching inputs to outputs, they're switching everything to get one line connected to another. So if you call them boomers old, guess who built the technology? The freaking boomers. Think about it. Simpler times, many, might even say better times. It's certainly fun to remember, and it's important to never forget. Thanks for watching, Memory Mountain. Any baby boomers watching this video, was what he stated here accurate by any means, okay? I'm gonna watch some more of these kind of videos because I just feel so giddy inside. And you boomers were basically the experiments and the creators and innovators and pushes of this stuff. And I have, you know, I, I am fully aware of the boomer hate here in America. I stand with my boomers, okay?